fire ignites passion and creativity. Free your imagination with the slim, sleek, and beautiful new Huawei P8. Remarkable. Tell us why you think this is a good idea. It's well known that we're moving into the second machine age, Toby, and uh, I think we have to learn to speak to machines, and coding is the way to do it. But there's a, there's a movement around the world, isn't there, to make code something that people do. It's not just coding programs, it's thinking in a structured way. It's a useful educational tool as well, isn't it? Well, you know, I think it's the same as you think about human languages. Very few of us actually have to study the grammar or the syntax of English, but we all use it every day. And I think in the world we're moving into now, coding is not just for techies. Very few of us are going to become coders. Although the number of coders we need is obviously growing. But I think it's useful for anyone to have some knowledge of how coding works. Because it's built into so many things that we do every day. Knowledge of how long does it take to develop a mobile application? How long does it take to launch a new consumer retail product online? All requires a little bit of understanding of coding. I was, about, I was going to ask, it is a great initiative, isn't it? It's a fantastic initiative. You know, I think it's been fabulously successful in France. So it's nice to see something coming here that's got a proven model um, that's demonstrated its worth elsewhere. What I particularly like about it in the South African context is that they don't start by looking at academic marks or prior achievements. They really look at aptitude. And if you've got the aptitude, they're prepared to put the investment in to make you a coder. And to me, that's very exciting from a social point of view as well. Arlene Mulder, this is a great occasion for you. This is the eventual happening of We Think Code. Well done. Tell us a little bit about it. Thank you so much. Yes, We Think Code is an incredible initiative that's just coming together. We're starting a new kind of tech university launching in, in town, in Joburg, next year. Our university is completely different. There's no teachers, there's no classes. It's completely free to students. Corporates sponsor students to go through this training, skills development. Corporates then also provide internships and students have then a clear path to employment. Coding is almost like the new literacy. You almost have to know how to code today. And if you look at almost any company out there, we're going through this digital revolution and it's such an important skill today. And we really just saw this massive gap in South Africa specifically, worldwide actually, um, a lack of skills in this coding information technology industry. Martine Schaffer is one of those people who loves to stay behind the scenes. People don't know that you are the pro behind the scenes, so I want to know what you think of an initiative like this. I think it's fantastic. I mean, we work very early in education and teaching children um, well, literacy, literacy skills through computers. Um, but I think, you know, we have to be preparing them for the 21st century. And it's initiatives like this that are got, once they get started are as what's going to be, make our um, learners actually employable when they get out into the job space. So I think we're we way behind in this in this country and we need initiatives like this to get us a step ahead. And what are some of the other great initiatives that you know about that people should be aware of? There's a similar initiative called Codex in Cape Town that's doing very similar things. There's the project by the XCON um, who's also teaching programming. There's R Labs and I love to think that we're at the very, very starting point of where the um, next generation is going to be. In that fact, the Click Foundation is um, getting them learning how to get onto a computer from grade R. I think it's a wonderful initiative because it precisely addresses things like unemployment and skills that I think are so needed going forwards. And what I particularly liked about it is that the test doesn't require any particular mathematical or language aptitude because that's not what they're testing. And I think that's what's exciting about code. Why has FNB decided to be a partner? So what we always say, Aki, is that in actual fact, we're not a bank. We're an IT shop that offers banking products and services. And we realize that today's competitors are actually not going to be the guys that we need to take on um, in terms of tomorrow's advantage in the banking industry. So for us, we think code gives us a real access into the non-institutionalized skills pipeline which gives us that innovative, progressive mindset around what are the latest technologies, how can we be updating our guys in terms of what are the latest platforms and bring that inside the bank so that in terms of society, we as FNB want to be relevant in the next 175 years of our existence. So we want to make a, play a role in an inclusive economy and we think code allows us to bring in guys 
through a non-institutionalized background. And we certainly as FMB feel that our code have got a long journey to run to continue our proud track record of successful innovation. It's actually quite difficult. Uh, you'll have a bit of aptitude if you can get that right. And uh, software eats the world, Aki. Software eats the world. So this is a good initiative. It's beautiful to see that uh, you just have to have a mind that uh, is in line with, with coding for you to, to be a part of this. We really need to get more women into coding because it needs to, the stereotype that it's male dominated, it shouldn't be for males, it's also for females. We found it very interesting because it's something that we're quite passionate about is getting coders who don't necessarily always have degrees but that are just passionate about coding.